battles are won by the ground forces, by the men on the ground who slog across the terrain the best way they can, who fight their way foot by foot to ultimate victory. The Marine in Vietnam has learned to fight an invisible enemy who usually knows the area better than he does, an enemy who, because of his hit and run tactics, is not dependent to the same extent upon logistics, an enemy who holds life cheaply. Always the objective of the ground commander, to quote a famous Confederate general, is to get their fustest with the mostest. No group of fighting men is more keenly aware of the value of this advice than the United States Marine Corps. The field phone barks its call for support, and the Marines respond with their sea knights. Wings for the ground commander. The men on the ground prepare to attack the enemy stronghold, while overhead the choppers stand by to support the operation. Let's listen for a moment to the sounds of war, to the actual battle description recorded on the scene by a U.S. Marine Corps correspondent. We've just gone into some D.C. here in the area. They just moved out on the line to assault this position, hitting it with everything they've got. And if there's any B.C. in there, that'll sure as hell clean them out. Right immediately to our front. The action has been going on now for about 10 minutes. We're still getting incoming rounds from the DC off in the village. So far, nobody's been able to see them yet. We're spread along the line here. The entire company spread out along the village. These Viet Cong are elusive. You can't see them. All you can do is hear the, hear, hear the bullets as they come at you. We're looking for tunnels, caves, anything where the Viet Cong may hide. Just about 20 minutes ago, we were sitting at a rest period, and one of the men commented on how day before yesterday they'd been sitting there at a rest period, and thinking that they were just about to their main objective and would be true for the day, when all of a sudden all hell broke loose. And that's just exactly what has happened here today. Today in Vietnam, helicopters like the Sea Knight evacuate casualties to field hospitals faster than ever before. More often than not, the ground commander's tactical plans are predicated on the ability of the helicopter to move troops quickly into battle. A great deal of thought and effort went into the development of helicopters like the Sea Knight. Its tandem rotor design, for instance, is of particular importance to the missions it performs. The Sea Knight's blades counter-rotate to offset torque. There's plenty of clearance under the aft blades, 16 feet of it. Small trucks, trailers, artillery pieces can be driven into the cabin quickly. The hydraulically operated rear ramp speeds loading and unloading. The cabin section of the fuselage is 24 feet long by six and a half feet wide by six feet high. 850 cubic feet of cargo space, no support members to interfere with the movement of personnel or cargo. The hydraulic winch mounted on the forward bulkhead pulls 2,000 pounds at speeds to 30 feet per minute. Two 100 nautical mile radius missions at sea level standard conditions were established to define the role of the Sea Knight. The first, the assault and supply mission, 17 combat troops or 4,000 pounds of cargo. This is the second, medical evacuation, medevac for short. 15 litter patients plus two medical attendants, three litters in each tier. 
But before this helicopter was accepted for duty with the U.S. Marine Corps, it went through a thorough development program, from ground testing to flight testing. Fuel jettison test, whitewash on the aircraft, detects any impingement in flight. Applying G-forces to substantiate design. Engines out, blades auto-rotating or wind milling to a safe landing. Amphibious capability, able to take off from water on a single engine if necessary. Hovering in a spray rig in Canada, testing ice protection systems, blades, windshields, engines. Live steam released under pressure into the freezing air. Flight tests in the high Sierras. The C Knight had to be capable of operating anywhere in the world. The Marines tested their new helicopter under combat conditions, checking the speed with which troops could be loaded and offloaded its ability to get in and out fast. The pilots began to get a feel for the Sea Knight and what it could do. The external cargo hook with its quick release mechanism was tried out in the field. During fleet exercises in the Caribbean, the Marines flew the new helicopter off carriers in vertical envelopment missions, carrying troops into simulated combat. This helicopter was designed for LPH carriers, able to fold or unfold its blades in less than a minute in 45 knot winds if required. A para-jump mission from the Sea Knight's rear ramp. Repelling through the cargo hatch while the helicopter hovers on a predetermined heading regardless of wind direction. An inshore replenishment mission, in rep, quickest way to supply troops in the field. For pre-flight inspections or maintenance, all components are accessible from the ground or from integral work platforms. The auxiliary power plant provide power to start engines, check out the hydraulic and utility systems, fold or unfold the rotor blades. The Sea Knight is independent of outside power sources. Fitted with engine inlet filters against the sand encountered in Vietnam, vital engine components protected by armor plate. High pressure, hot refueling without shutting down engines puts a Sea Knight back in action in four minutes. One last night formation flight winds up the operational training program. Leaders are cautioned that uh, this is the most difficult thing that you have to do as leaders. The leader is this night work that we're doing tonight, and it requires uh, you know smooth power changes and very smooth uh, changes in attitude and angle of bank. Then a West Coast rendezvous for new duty, Southeast Asia. When the Sea Knights and their crews arrive in Vietnam, they are ready to fly missions that had been flown many times in practice. Offloading men and supplies to airfields ashore. bringing ashore heavy or bulky cargo as they had during fleet exercises in the Caribbean. The Sea Knight is called upon to perform yet another type of mission, salvage of downed aircraft, flying over a war-torn countryside. A helicopter is a valuable aircraft, too valuable to abandon. When it's down in the boondocks, there's only one way to bring it out. That's with another helicopter, like the Sea Knight. The Marine CH-46 has salvaged millions of dollars worth of aircraft, kept them out of enemy hands, and put them back into inventory to fly again.
speeding ammo and mortars to ground forces in combat, along with other helicopters. The Sea Knight carries out its primary mission, the rapid deployment of troops, support equipment, and supplies. Its rear ramp simplifies loading. Waiting is the hard part. Americans and Vietnamese nationals with their red berets. Ground commanders discuss strategy. And the helicopter figures prominently in the plans. To move troops into position quickly, like these Vietnamese. All over South Vietnam, the story is the same men riding into battle in the big tandem rotor helicopters, enveloping the enemy. To the ground commander, the Sea Knight represents strong new wings for his vertical envelopment concept. To the Marine, waiting for what the next moment may bring, the Sea Knight means mobile support he needs to help win this ugly war.